RC from the Montauk Joiner Shop here. A while back I did a video about how to design well-proportioned furniture. I'll leave a link in the description. And in that video I touched upon graduated drawers. And I said in that video almost to myself as much as anybody, you know, it would be a good idea to do a video about that someday. This is that video. Alright, so before I get into the nitty gritty of how to calculate graduated drawer fronts, I thought it might be a good idea to talk about why it might be a good idea in the first place. There's no rule that says you have to graduate drawer fronts when you're building a chest of drawers, but there are some good reasons for it. For one, it's the look of the piece. When you have graduated drawers in the reverse, where your tallest drawers are at the top and your shortest drawers are at the bottom of the case, it has a very top-heavy look. And speaking of top-heavy, generally speaking, you put your more bulky, heavier items into your larger drawers. If all of those are at the top of the case, you have a piece that is literally top heavy such that it might fall over on somebody. So having your larger drawers at the bottom of the case and your smaller ones at the top make for a more grounded look, but also a piece that has a lower center of gravity and is more stable. So there's definitely a form follows function kind of thing going on there. It's hard to deny the appeal of a chest of drawers in which the drawers are nice and evenly graduated from top to bottom in kind of a subtle way. It has a way of drawing your eye and having a nice flow to it as you look across the piece. So with all that said, how would you calculate the graduations in a chest of drawers? At first it looks very complicated and it kind of is and it kind of isn't. So I'll show you how to do it hopefully in a way that makes sense to you and that you can reference back to in the future anytime you're building a case of drawers in which the drawers are graduated. All right, so for the sake of demonstration, I have a panel here that I've glued up and all I've done is scrape the glue off of it and squared it up on three sides. So I have something I can use as an example. And what this is going to represent is the opening in a case. So you're going to imagine that there's drawer sides here, maybe some sort of molding and a top on it maybe a base and some legs, none of that stuff matters. The only thing that matters is the opening in which you are going to fit your drawers and your horizontal drawer dividers. And you need to know what the dimension of that space is from top to bottom. And of course, to accomplish that, you're going to need something to measure it with. So I have a tape measure here. And it's also a good idea to have the writing utensil and a pad of paper, something to write on. And if you're like me and you're almost embarrassingly arithmetically challenged, you might want to have a calculator with you. Now I'm going to do this demonstration in metric because metric is the smarter way to do pretty much anything in woodworking. Uh, it's definitely easier from the standpoint of formulas and whatnot. But if you want to do it the hard way and use Imperial, you might want to have a calculator that can handle fractions as well. Uh, that way you're less liable to make a mistake in your calculations and uh, perhaps injure some brain cells. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure this opening and take it from there. Now before you do anything, you're going to need to make a couple of decisions. Among those are, how many drawers do you want to make up the space that's being taken up here? Do you want it to be four, three, five, six, etc.? cetera? Uh, the other thing you're going to want to know before you do this is the height of your drawer dividers. All that's going to factor into this. Now. The way I like to do this is to make the difference in height between adjacent drawers equal to the height of your horizontal drawer dividers. I think that makes for a nice subtle look, a subtle graduation uh, that is nevertheless a practical one. If you make the difference in graduations between the height of your drawers a larger one, you can overdo it at some point. You'll get to the point where you have a very, very blade thin drawer at the top. That's not very practical. And you might end up in a, uh, in a situation where your biggest drawer at the bottom is too tall to be practical and is almost square in shape. So I would err on the side of using a smaller uh, graduation amount moving from drawer to drawer than a bigger one. And again, I think one of the best ways to do that is to graduate the height of your drawers the same distance as the height of your horizontal dividers. So for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to be dividing this opening up into four drawers and then five drawers. And the reason for that is the formula works slightly different depending upon whether you're doing an even number of drawers or an odd number of drawers to fill up the space. Another thing that's important to note is that the number of horizontal drawer dividers you're going to have in between each of your drawers is always going to be one less than the number of drawers you put into that opening. So if I'm doing four drawers, I'm going to have three horizontal dividers. If I'm doing five drawers, I'm going to have four horizontal dividers in between those drawers. 
So regardless of whether you're dividing up your opening into four or five drawers, the number that you need to get to is the average height of your drawers. And in order to calculate that, you need to know what the height of the opening is, of course. In this case, that's uh, 47.8 centimeters. And then you need to minus from that the space that your horizontal dividers take up. So for the sake of this demonstration, we'll say that my horizontal drawer dividers are all about 12 mil tall or 1.2 centimeters. And again, if you have four drawers, then the amount of dividers you have are going to be one less than that. So that would be three dividers at 1.2 centimeters is going to be 3.6 centimeters of height. So I'll take my overall height of 47.8 and minus from that my 3.6 centimeters and that's going to get me 44.2. If I divide that 44.2 by the number of drawers I'm putting in here, which is four, I get 11.05 centimeters. Now that 0.05 centimeters to me is negligible. Uh, so I'm just going to round to 11 centimeters even. That, you know, half of a, a millimeter is less than the expansion gap I'm going to have in my, my lower drawers between the, the height of the drawer and the divider um, so it doesn't, you know, bind up in the summertime. So, so 11 centimeters is my average drawer height if this is going to be four drawers. All right, so at this point what I like to do is get a little piece of paper and make that a kind of a visual representation of the the uh, case that I'm dividing up. So what I'm going to do is draw a horizontal line and that's going to represent the middle of the three drawer dividers. And I may as well draw, draw in the other two as well. So there's my middle one. Remember that the average drawer height that we just calculated is basically rounded off to 11 centimeters and that the height of each of these horizontal drawer dividers was 1.2 centimeters. So what I'm going to do is take my average drawer height of 11 and for the drawer that's right above these, this middle divider, I'm going to minus half of that height of the horizontal drawer divider, which is 0.6. So that's going to give me a drawer height of 10.4. And below that horizontal drawer divider, I'm going to take my average drawer height of 11 and add half of this horizontal drawer divider height of 0.6. And that's going to be... 11.6. So you can see here I've, I've minus 0.6 and I've added 0.6 on either side of that middle drawer divider. Now when I do the top and bottom drawer I'm going to add the full height of a drawer divider or minus as the case may be. So 10.4 minus 1.2 is going to be 9.2. And 11.6 plus 1.2 is going to be 12.8. So plus, whoops, that's minus, minus 1.2 and plus 1.2. So those are the heights of my graduated drawer fronts, 9.2 centimeters all the way up to 12.8 and a drawer divider of 1.2 centimeters in between each of them. And if you were to add all of this up, 9.2 plus 10.4 plus 11.6 plus 12.8 plus 1.2 for this drawer divider, 1.2 for that one, 1.2 for that one. Once you've done all of that, you'll end up with a total that is the same as the overall height of that drawer opening. Hopefully, that's the way you can kind of check your work. But that's how you graduate drawers into four drawers with three dividers in between them. And now I'm going to do the same thing again, but with five drawers. So you can see how that's just a little bit different. All right, so here I have my little notepad to represent the opening that I'm working on. And this time I'm going to divide this into five equally graduated drawers. And just for the sake of throwing a little wrench in the works here, I'm going to uh, do this presuming that my drawer dividers are all and even one centimeter tall. Now you'll recall from earlier that the height of my opening was 47.8. And if I'm dividing this into five graduated drawers, it means I have four drawer dividers that are one centimeter tall. Four of those together is four centimeters. So 47.8 minus four centimeters is going to be 43.8. And then I'm going to divide that by five to get the average height of my drawer openings. That is going to be 8.76. So 
So 43.8 divided by 5, 8.76. Here's where things are a little bit easier than it would be if I was doing an even number of drawers like four. I'm just gonna draw my horizontal divider lines on here now. So if I have five drawers, I'm gonna have four lines on this, on this opening. Two, three, four. The middle opening, or the middle drawer in this case, is going to be equal to the average drawer height. So we've got one of these figured out already. This one is 8.6 centimeters tall, that middle drawer of the five. Now to calculate the rest of them, I'm going to just minus the height of my drawer divider for each of them. So 8.76 minus the height of this drawer divider will be 7.76. And we'll do it again for the top drawer. So 7.76 minus the height of a drawer divider of one centimeter will be 6.76. And then that's minus minus. And then we're gonna do plus plus as we work our way down. So that's gonna be 9.76 and 10.76. So that is the height of all five of my drawers evenly graduated by the same amount as the height of my drawer dividers from top to bottom. So that is how you do that. All right, so that's about as mathematical as I'm liable to ever get on my YouTube channel, but hopefully it made sense. Hopefully it helped you out. But it's important thing to, to note that uh, if you're like me, you don't do this calculation very often, so you will come to a point where you're like, wait, how do I do that? And your first inclination is going to be to do it in an internet search. And at least when I did it, I couldn't find this information readily. Um, in the instances where I did find it, it was behind a paywall. So what I would recommend doing in this case, and here's a little tip, is to look around here somewhere, you will see a box that says watch later. You can add this video to your watch later folder, and you can reference it back next time you do this calculation to graduate drawers. And of course, you can also use that tip to store any video uh, that you would like to reference back to in the future. If you're like me and you're kind of like a student of YouTube University, you use it to learn how to do things, that is an important thing, I think, to know how to do. So look for your watch later checkbox, check that, and you'll be all good in the future. Now, if you like what you saw here, please hit like and subscribe, it helped me out a lot. Also hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified anytime I release a new video. And if you didn't like what you saw here, keep it to yourself, pal. Or watch one of my other videos. You might like one of those. Thank you for watching.